you, you guys, everyone seems to be voting UKIP. This isn't 15%, it's more like 95%. Why did this not happen to me in 2010? If I'd had this level of support, I'd still be a member of Parliament now. The big question is, what's causing the robust support that we've seen uh, Nigel Farage as an individual have, and also UKIP as a whole? Call me on 03459 811111, email me on Kent Midmorning at bbc.co.uk or text me on 81333 starting your text with the word Kent. Our next guest can perhaps explain this strange bulletproof phenomenon which is UKIP support. Elizabeth Jones is UKIP's prospective parliamentary candidate for Dartford. Good morning Elizabeth, how are you? Oh good morning Lempid, all the better for speaking to you. Oh, sycophancy gets you everywhere on this <laughs> show. So I've got to, but actually it doesn't because I'm going to have to push you hard on this. I just don't get this. I don't understand why caller after caller says well actually UKIP's all right when you're in the middle of yet another allegation story. Nothing's been proved, let's be clear about that. But it's just more bad news for UKIP. But why does your, your poll rating not change? I think our poll rating doesn't change because UKIP is such a strong brand now and it is an insurgent, I would almost say, dissident party. We are the party of ugly truth. We tell it as it is. We tell it the way most of the electorate believe that it is. We are, I see us very much like the mythical character Cassandra, who was doomed always to tell the truth <laughs> and to be able to prophesy, prophesy the future, but was never, ever believed. Did and it, she was reviled wherever she yeah, went. It didn't, it didn't end well for Cassandra. I think that's a pretty dodge. We probably started another scandal now. Farage will be on the phone saying, don't ever mention Cassandra again <laughs> in, in relation to you, Kip. You, know, you just want to add more fuel to the fire, do you, Elizabeth? No, not really. I think mean, Cassandra is a great Greek myth about the, mm. the woman who is accursed with truth and prophecy. Well, let's say wherever she went to speak that truth and prophecy, she was reviled. Because UKIP is attacking and opening up debate and discussion for uh, concerning some sacred cows of this country, namely our uh, membership of the EU and also uh, immigration. These are issues that have not really been put under the microscope until UKIP turned up. You're, so, all power to UKIP. You're a pr prospective parliamentary candidate, so I think that puts you in the Premier League, the front line, you're one of the, the shock troops of UKIP, so I'm going to give you a pretty hard time now. I'm going to ask you the, these, these three questions. Yes. Question one, how on earth can you expect to be taken seriously after the kind of hugely embarrassing programmes which have been aired to the nation about the inside story of UKIP? And you can't pretend that those were good for you. No, th well, you say they weren't good for you. There is the philosophy, no publicity is bad publicity. Furthermore, I think the electorate now I, I, is... I might dispute that with my own experience. Oh. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking, we're all talking to you now, Lempid. <laughs> I suppose you are. I you're you're you the are. host of the show, so I think it's worked out okay for you. <laughs> uh, well, I think that the electorate now um, is highly sophisticated. We have access to the internet. We have access to a whole range of media whereby we can access information very rapidly. And whilst I've been out canvassing in Dartford, I have been extremely impressed with the uh, level of knowledge the local electorate has. You knock on the door, start talking. Uh, a constituent mm. member can basically give you chapter and verse about the foreign aid situation. Right. Right. So I think we're dealing with a very sophisticated electorate now, and they can see through this. There was a YouGov poll in 2014, and... That asked, well, do you think uh, press coverage of UKIP is unfair? 47% said yes. Okay, question, que question two then. Question two. I'm not letting you have a party political broadcast. <laughs> How can you really be a proper political party if, as one of the previous callers said, you're kind of made up from loads of, of exiles from other parties? If you like, political immigrants have joined together to form UKIP from Labour, from Tories, probably from U Lib Dems as well. How can they possibly be taken seriously as having one philosophy if they come from three or more different philosophies well it's like america america drew people from all over the world all different uh, creeds ethnicities views to produce uh, probably one of the, the world's greatest nation of the current era uh, so i don't think that's really an issue it shows that there's a huge dissatisfaction uh, with the current political class with the current political system that drove people who have been faithful to these previous um, institutions and previous ph uh, philosophical bases to move to ukip so i i think that's a very positive thing and um we say about it, mixed up with the identity what are you saying the worst of the worst i don't I don't think that's true at all. If we look now at the expenses scandal, mm. nine MPs who lost their jobs for expenses scandals 
have been reselected. Uh, I'm just not even going to let you go there, Elizabeth. I don't want to hear what's wrong with the other parties. I want to hear what's right with UKIP. And so when you start knocking the others, you do actually sound like the other parties, my friend. Oh, I do apologise, Leonard. Yeah. Try harder. Oh, try OK, harder. I'll try and, harder. And try harder on this third and, and last question for you. UKIP, the bigger it gets, the more successful it gets, the more we see stories about what's wrong with individuals in it, embarrassing stories, allegations of, of expenses. Doesn't this suggest that if you actually did get into government, you would just be totally scandal-ridden, and, uh, and I don't want to be rude, but a liability to any coalition partner? They'd just run a mile if you actually had 40 MPs and this kind of thing carried on. When, you know, if you were, for example, uh, let's say, Foreign Minister Elizabeth Jones, how would you be able to do that job if you have to continuously to justify, cover your back, and have internal uh, investigations like the one that's apparently going to start with regard to Janice Atkinson's uh, member of staff? Well, I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. I mean, Janice Atkinson is one out of our 24 MEPs who's been found, possibly, we don't know if she has, to be involved in expenses. Well, scandals. nothing's been proved, as you say. Exactly, yeah. nothing's been proved. It's one out of 24. We're a small party. We've got 24 MEPs. Only one appears to have been involved in this issue. And, again, I have to say, I know you don't want me to do, but if you compare to the other parties, we've got whole, we've got teams, football teams of people involved in expenses who remain in their positions. So I don't think I'd be constantly fighting a fire concerning my, my own uh, con members. So I don't think that's going to really impact my ability to do the job. I think UKIP would be an excellent uh, coalition partner with the Tories. And... Ah, I hope that we go ahead. So, so, so that's the plan, a uh, coalition with the Tories. Well, that's my yeah. personal plan. I can't say for the, par for the party generally, but that's my, that's my personal plan. I think that would probably segue in quite nicely because, mm. uh, as I say, Labour are not offering a referendum. Well, OK, that's where you kept started, of course. Elizabeth, it is always a delight to debate with you. Thank you for giving us your points of view.